All right, last section of the day, or the chapter, 1.8. So I have a PowerPoint to show you, but uh, this stuff's pretty easy. Pretty easy stuff. I think you'll like this section. Is it one side of pink? A what? Pink or pink? orange. Oh. I, I can change, I'll, I'll change color here eventually. So use the quadratic formula and the discriminant. That's lesson 1.8. Mm -hmm. We're going to find out. Just be patient and I will share with you all little secrets about this. So students will be able to use the quadratic formula. The essential question will be, how do you use the quadratic formula and the discriminant? Pretty neat stuff. Nito burrito. So I'm going to derive real quickly for you the, the quadratic formula. Derive it. I'm going to show you where it comes from. You see, uh, on that previous, uh, if you look on the board, I have it written down for you. It says x is equal to negative b plus or minus, there's a plus or minus here, plus or minus the square root of b squared um, minus 4ac divided by what is that? it's the quadratic formula of what? yeah I'm going to show you how it works and I'm going to derive it real quick because that's exciting stuff in math so how do you anyway. have a b squared in a, in a square root? oh you'll, you'll see here in just a moment the a, b, and c come from our quadratic equation. You've seen this before. It's a x squared plus b x plus c is equal to zero. And yes, the a, b, and c, these a, b, and c's are the ones that are over here in the formula. So to solve this equation, for x, all you need to know is a, b, and c. Kind of neat. So what I'd like to do is show you where this came from or how to get it. Well, you ready for the secret? Now for this, I would just recommend watching me because I'm just going to kind of go quickly through it. I don't expect you to derive it on a test. I'm not going to ask you please derive the quadratic formula by completing the square. That's a out. We'll just use the quadratic formula once you see it, okay? So this is just for your entertainment. So what you do is complete the square. And you know from completing the square in 1.7 that if we have a number out in front of the x square, we've got to get rid of it, right? Mm -hmm. So we divide through a, divide through by a here. But I know this is boring, right? Just just watch. Oh, I see you really big. This? It's red. <laughs> what? You want pink? Well, is this pink enough? I can use pink. So the A's cancel out here, right? Mm -hmm. So I have X squared plus B over A. Now those of you that want to be a math genius someday, you might want to copy down this. Just you said not to. Well, there's some people that really like math. I'm not gonna copy it down Well, I, I'm not gonna put it on a test, okay? I'm not gonna expect you to derive it. But zero divided by a is still zero. Now what's the next thing we need to do when we're completing the square? This constant term needs to move to the other side over here. And I can show you a quick way to do that. It's called the eraser function. Erase this, okay, and you put a negative on it. Okay, there you go. You got it. You see what I did? I just I just moved this one over to the other side, and when it moves, it changes sign, right? You guys kind of do that, right? Yeah. Okay, I hope so. Now the reason why I put a little gap here is because we need to add something there. We're going to put a box in there because remember we want to complete the square. So I'm going to add the same thing over here. Mm -hmm. Remember I got it so far? Now the thing that I had, I shared with you the secret. How do we figure that out? You divide the middle term by 2. 
And then you take that expression and square it. Yes, it is the same thing we've been doing. Because it, that's how you get this formula over here. Just watch, just watch, you'll see. Have, have faith. You'll see this amazing stuff. Now, by the way, I'd like to show you something. I'm going to say that this is equal to B over 2A. Okay? That's what I'm going to say. And then I'm going to say we need to square that to figure out what goes here. Where did you get the A from the bottom? I'll show you that here in a second. Now, if we squared this, what would we have? We would have, I'll do this on the side here, b over 2a times b over 2a. So that would give me b squared over 4a squared, right? And so the thing that I need to add is the b squared over 4a squared. You see? And I need to add the same thing over here. b squared over 4a squared. Now you might wonder, well how did this transform to that down there anyways? So I'll show you this on the side over here. You ready? If you're good with fractions, you probably got it already. So if you have b over a and you divide by 2, well, let's just put this over 1 for a second. This symbol right here means divide, right? Uh huh. Well, so if that means divide, we could write this as b over a divided by 2 over 1. Uh huh. And you might remember that you can switch to multiplication if you flip the fraction on the right. So if you take this over here and you flip the fraction on the right, you get 1 over 2. And then that, of course, equals b over 2a. Okay, I see. So now you guys get how I did that? Yeah. Now, if you're clever at this and you've done it a few times, you'll just put the 2 down there. <laughs> you see? <coughs> all right, all right. Well, so now let me use my big eraser and erase this so I have some clean room here to do the next step. What I know now is that this is a perfect square. Right? Mm hmm Right? This is what? X plus B over 2A. Right? You guys been doing this for a while? Did a whole bunch? Well, let's simplify this mess over here a little bit. Uh, what's another cool color I can use? Turquoise. Is this turquoise there? Okay, close enough. Okay, but I would like to add these two together. So I need a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply by a 4a here. And I'll multiply by a 4a here. And then now I'll have a common denominator. You see, what I have then is 4a squared. And I, over here I have a 4a squared. And up on top side I have a b squared here. And over here I have a negative 4ac. Mm -hmm. You see, so um, there's a plus sign here. So what do I have now? Let me continue this here a little bit, make it cleaner. I have equals uh, negative 4ac plus b squared over 4 a squared. Does that look good? Now what's the next step in completing the square? I forgot. Square root, right? So what I wanted to do is a square root here. Bam! And square root here. And the square root here cancels off with the square because they're inverse operations. So I have x plus b over 2a here. Now take a look at this. How about, since I have a fraction, I take a square root on both top and bottom separately. So I'll do a square root down here, and that square root could be on top. Now remember, since we're solving for x, we need to have a plus or minus here. So the numerator simplifies. I have negative 4ac 
plus b squared. Now, by the way, can I write the b squared first? I can switch that around, right? I can write the b squared first, minus 4ac. <coughs> and I'm gonna put the square root here on top, and I'm gonna put a plus or minus right here. Now, what about the square root on the bottom? Well, those are two perfect squares. Square root of four is two. Square root of a squared is a. Now this is starting to look like this over here, right? <laughs> In fact, there's only one more step to go. I just need to move this to the other side. So if I subtract b over 2a, and I subtract b over 2a here, I get x is equal to, by the way, they have the same denominator, right? And so this becomes negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Well, the nice thing about this, if you look at it, is the way you could solve for x is just by knowing those coefficients. So, let me demonstrate this real quick on the next slide. Bam. There's the formula right here. Now, for the test, I will have this written up on the whiteboard like I had to do already right now. So you don't have to worry about memorizing, but I would recommend that you memorize it. All the top students memorize everything that's important. And this is one of those most important things in algebra. It's a quadratic formula. So let's look at a problem. Now here's the deal when you're solving a problem and you're trying to use that quadratic formula. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll write it down x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root. And I, you know, to be quite honest, I write this down every single problem. And I do this to help me remember what the formula is. So now I have it burned in my head, I think. It's like a tattoo up there. And I should be able to call you like at 2 o'clock in the morning and say, what's the quadratic formula? And you say, oh, Mr. Russell, I know it. It's negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So, give me your phone numbers and I'm going to call and test you. Whoa. Oh, I know. That's a little weird, isn't it? Alright. So, I won't call at 2 in the morning and ask you what the quadratic formula is. But, here's the deal. In order to use the quadratic formula, you have to have the quadratic in standard form first. Is this in standard form? Okay, now how do I know you're not guessing? Do you know for sure? Why? What's wrong with it? It's no, it has a C. What's wrong with this? It's not in standard form. Why? What do you notice about that over there? It's y equals zero. It's not equal to zero. You need the A, B, and C on the same side. There you go. Thank you, Jose. So we need to start off by mo moving the 2 over. So we get x squared plus 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now my friends, all you need to do is identify what one's A, which one's B. Uh, that one's easy to identify. There's your B. That one's easy to identify. This is your C. Where's A at? It's not x. It's not 2. It's not 0. It's one. Oh. One. <laughs> you see, normally we don't write the one in front, but there's your A. Okay? So now what you do is you put your A, B, and C right up here. And I'll tell you where people make mistakes. None of you guys will do this, right? They make a mistake right there. Where? <laughs> Now, if B, if B is a positive 3, then what's negative B? Negative 3. Negative 3 in this case. Now, go to the next portion. Plus or minus the square root. What do we need now? We need B squared, right? Well, if B is 3, then B squared is 9. Minus 4. Now we need to figure out what A is. A is one. 
So we put in a 1 right here. What is C? C is this one. It's negative 2. And then we divide this whole ugliness by 2 times A, which is 1. All right, so that's the first step. Just plug the numbers in. That's what I recommend anyways. The second step is you try to clean things up a little bit. Negative 3. Let's see. 4 times 1 times 2 is 8. And a negative times a negative is a positive. So this portion that's inside of here is really the same thing as plus 8, isn't it? Which means I get a 17. So this is plus or minus 17. Oh, wait, wait. There's a square root in there, right? So back that up. There's a square root. Oh, Russell. 17. <laughs> and I can divide this by 2. And that's what x is equal to. Well, wasn't that easy? Now, by the way, if you have your white sheet of paper, you have a worked out example now on how to do the quadratic formula. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you a problem. And I'm going to try and go quickly through it because it's kind of a review, but I'm going to show you three ways to do it. Three ways. And Is this the easiest way? Sometimes. Okay. I hope after I do this example three different ways, you can decide which way is easiest. Okay. Okay? So, let's go to here. I'm going to solve this one three ways. You ready? This problem here. This is a new problem. Oh, don't freeze on me, dumb thing. Okay. Anybody see that? Okay, so way back early in the chapter, we learned a way to solve this. It was the principle of zero products. It said if you can factor this, you can find the zeros quickly. Thank goodness I know how to factor. In fact, I say 6 and 1. I say this is x plus 1. I say this is x plus 6. And I say that's equal to 0. And then I say x is equal to Sorry. negative 1 Sorry. or x equals negative 6. Okay, that is the method we learned and that was the principle. The principle, is it AL? Principle? It's Mr. Oten. Principle of zero products. And that basically said products. It said if you have a couple things multiplying together and it's equal to zero, one of them or, or the other has to be equal to zero. And so you can find the two x's quickly. Uh, now if I use the quadratic formula, I should get the same answer, right? True. Right. So uh, just real briefly, I'm going to show you the quadratic formula on the same exact problem. All right. And then I'll show you one last method completing the square, okay? So if I use the quadratic, it said this is equal to x is equal to negative b. Well, in this case, my a is right there. This is my b and this is my c, right? Yeah? So it's supposed to be negative b. So that's negative 7 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Well, b squared would be 49. And then minus 4ac. So that'd be 4 times a, which is 1 times c, which is 6. And then I divide that by 2 times 1. Now, you might look at this and you go, oh my goodness, that ugliness equals that or that? It doesn't look like it yet. Let's go back to our cool pink color. That's kind of cool. Pink. <sighs> okay, but let's take a look here. This is 4 times 1 times 6. That's actually 24, right? And 49 minus 24 is 25. 21. 25. <laughs> and what's the square root of 25? Five. So yeah, this is equal to negative 7 plus or minus 5 over 2. Now let's just imagine that we're talking about the plus 5 for a second instead of the negative. We'd have negative 7 plus 5 which is equal to negative 2 over 2, which is equal to negative 1. Right? 
and doesn't that matches up exactly with that one over there. Now, if you have the negative 5, you'd have negative 12 over 2, which is equal to negative 6. Now, now, isn't this cool? Now, so the point is, every time you have this quadratic formula, or every time you have a quadratic, you could solve it by using the quadratic formula. And you can also do it sometimes by factoring. The problem is not all problems factor, though, right? We saw, we saw that. Um, so guess what? We have a third method that works also, right? And let me erase this. And I'll show you the third way that we just learned a few days ago. Right? Complete the square. Right? Complete the square, remove the 6 over, right? And so using the eraser method, I write this as... Negative 6, right? But since I'm completing the square, I'd like to find out what that number right here would be. And I want to add this number over here. What is it? It's, you got to divide that by 2, right? But then you need to square it. So I agree that you're going to have seven, x plus 7 halves but we still need to figure out what that number is going to be. Because you got to square this, right? And so if you square that, you get 7 halves times 7 halves, and you get 49 fourths. Ugh. This looks ugly, doesn't it? Yes. You have a 49 fourths right here, and you have a 49 fourths right here. But look at this. Let's say we have a common denominator here. To, to fix this fraction, I need to multiply by 4 here and multiply by 4 up here. And guess what I get? I get 24. And it's negative. And if I add that to the 49, I get 25 fourths. But now I take the square root on both sides and I take the square root over here. And this gives me x plus 7 halves is equal to 5 over 2. And now, look, we subtract the 7 half. So we have plus or minus. And now we subtract the 7 half. Imagine that, right? Okay, so we get x is equal to... Now notice, when we have the positive 5 halves, we add that to negative 7 halves, we get negative 2 over 2 again, which is equal to negative 1. And when you use the negative 1, we get negative 12 halves, which is equal to the negative 6. So, lo and behold, we've seen three ways to do the same problem. Yeah, completing a square is often annoying, isn't it? I agree. Now, when it comes to the day of the test on Monday, uh, Friday, you have to follow directions. Okay, so when I say solve the quadratic by completing the square, that's what I'm testing you on, is whether you can complete the square or not. The one I just did is completing the square. Well, I can stop it for a few moments. What's your... And we'll just do one more problem quickly here. If you want, you can use this as your example on your sheet, but you don't need a study guide for this section. So, what did I, hey, I told you guys a while ago that the first step would be something. What is the first step here? Not give up. You got to move everything to one side, right? You need standard form before you can use the quadratic. So this needs to come over here. This needs to come over here somewhere. Can you guys do this step in your head? We'd subtract 12x, right? Subtract 12x. And then move the 9 and it becomes a positive 9, right? So you're going to have 25x squared. And then you have minus... 30x 
And then you're going to have plus 9. Now I have to admit, right now I'd pick the factoring method if I had to choose. But we're... we're the principal of zero credit? Yeah, I'd use that. Oh, that would be easy right here. I know, because you have to multiply 25 times 9. No, 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 no. That's if you do the AC method. Now I'd do the... I'd check the pattern method. <laughs> Oh, that's because they're both perfect squares. Yeah, there you go. See, yeah, yeah, there you go. See, look. So you get five x plus. Okay, so let's use let's use the quadratic. The thingy squared. Yeah. Let's use the quadratic. Yeah. Now, now let's use the let's use the quadratic. Now, now remember, sh now I'm just gonna write it down real quick so you could have it. It was negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus four ac, right? Divided by two a. Now here's where people make mistakes. They, they see this is B, and they go, they start to psych them out. And they go, well, does this B include the negative here? <laughs> you see? Because they, they see a negative there, and they go, well, I don't know if this 30 is supposed to be negative. And they screw up. This, this sign goes with your B. So it's going to be negative 30. So, so, so if B is negative 30, then negative B is equal to positive 30 this time. Does that make sense? No. It, this, this just means opposite. So whatever this is, you start off with negative 30, the opposite of negative 30 is positive 30. So don't, don't make it harder than it is. So you should have X is equal to 30 plus or minus. The square root. Now hold up. We haven't used A and C yet. I'm going to this part now. Well, 30 squared is 900, isn't it? Hey. I'm going to kick you out for that language. Yeah, baby, quiet. You're to me. Okay, so what we need to do is simplify this. Now you'll notice this simplifies kind of nicely because take a look here. Four times twenty-five is a hundred, right? And a hundred times nine is nine hundred. So this is nine hundred here, and that's nine hundred. So they subtract off, and you get zero. And square root of zero is zero. So this ends up being 30 plus or minus 0 over 50. Yeah, I got three and then that's equal to 3 fifths. Because that's equal to 30 over 50, right? And that's equal to 3 over 5. And so there's only one answer this time. My friends, please notice that sometimes you get one answer, sometimes you get two. Any questions? There's one other idea we need to talk about, and that's called the discriminant. So pay attention. It's coming up on the next slide. The discriminant. It's coming up right here. Bam. It's right here. The discriminant is the part that's inside the square root only. It's so the B squared minus 4AC. What, do you, what would you ask us about this? <laughs> well, we're going to find out what the discriminant tells you in just a second. This is what I would put on the other side of your sheet. Write down what the discriminant is. Now, I personally will write it this way. Um, hold on. Back up. Need my pen here. I will use a capital D. And I'm going to say capital D is equal to B squared minus 4AC. Now, my friends, when you calculate this discriminant, there's three things that can happen. This total, whatever it is, it could be less than zero. It could be equal to zero or it could be bigger than zero. So those are the three cases that can come up. Now let me show you just real quick what happens if that does. You see? If, if you add up this discriminant and it's bigger than zero, it describes, and pay attention so you get this, it describes the solutions. You have two real zeros right there, you see? Right here, right here. So you have two real solutions. Now you remember that example we just did? 
the discriminant was actually equal to zero because remember we had like 900 minus 900 and we got zero for that. So we took the square root of zero. Well, that's the case right here. And look at what the graph does. It only crosses at one point. And on your graph, it would have occurred at three fifths. Remember that's what we got? X was equal to three fifths. And then there's another possibility where this is actually less than zero. And that means you're taking the square root of a negative number. So you get imaginary solutions. And that means it doesn't even cross the x-axis. So let's do a couple examples. Anyone want to pick a letter to try? D's not on here. Come on. Let's try B. So the discriminant is equal to B squared minus 4AC. So this is your A, this is your B, this is your C. I'm not waiting until you guys are done talking. John, do you have a question? <laughs> What's so funny? Goodness. You have to school today. That's not it. That's your he, he asked to go by John. Okay, so it looks like to me we get negative 8. And then we square that. And then we get minus 4 times A. A is 1 in this case. And C is 16. And if I get this, I get 64 minus 64. Are you done, Jose? <laughs> I'm trying to teach and you're talking in the background. <laughs> so, based on this result, we say, therefore, there is one real solution. You see, because they're going to ask you to describe the types of... They're going to say, what are the types of solutions do you have? The number of solutions... And what type are they? What do you mean? Are they real or are they imaginary? Like is there eye? Yeah, do they have eye things involved? Let's do this one, part A here. Part A, is, all the only difference is that's a 17 and this one's a 16. But their solutions are quite a bit different. So, <laughs> so let's try the discriminant on this one. Well, the only difference then is this. We get D is equal to negative B. Sure. And so in this case, we get 64 again, but we get minus 68. And so this time we have negative 4 which is less than zero, and therefore we have two imaginary. Now, I'm not sure if that's the best way to say it. We could say we have two complex solutions. It's probably a better way to say it. Solutions. You guys realize it's on video, so I can show your parents someday how you guys behave in class. Show them. Show them, huh? Okay. Hi, might, Mom. Might, <laughs> might regret show that. <laughs> okay, so here's what I would do. All we have left to get ready for as far as the test is section 1.8 and the practice test. So you have Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday and Thursday to get these done. So um, I'm even generous. I'll even give you about 10 minutes right now to get started on this stuff. Let's just Thank you. <laughs> 10 minutes, Mr. Right on. I know. No, don't call me anything like that. That's not right. I said you 